Hello, everybody. It's really nice um, to see you all here. I was really looking forward to this. I think it's, it's the first time that I'm actually talking about this subject, even though the title of this, this series is Living a, a Gentler Life. I'm looking at it now from a different space. Somehow it, it's taken a different, it's looking different for me. And um, I think this is the third in, in I've lost count, it's, it really doesn't matter, in the, <laughs> in the, in the series of, um, in the series called <laughs> Living a Gentle Life. And today our guest is the really sweet Jonelle Sims. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm not sweet all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> um, but um, as usual, the people I reach out to, generally speaking, I have no idea who they are. I've only met them. I had only met Janelle once before. And, um, and usually what I do, if something touches me, um, I reach out and the post of Janelle really touched me. And I think I was on the train. I was on the train. I was on, way, on the way to England. And I read your post. I read Janelle's post. And I thought, and the question was, do we really have to love ourselves? Right, Janelle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I had been struggling with this. Mm -hmm. Do I or do I not? And the explanation and the, 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 the words just flew. And, you know, it's really not about the words. They really touched me. They really did. So I, I, I reached out and here we are. Um, I really enjoyed talking to her and she has some really wonderful things to say. And, and, and from now on, this is the only direction I will look at who, the truth of who we really are. So, Janelle, welcome, welcome everybody, welcome Vanessa. Um, do you want to talk a bit about how you are living a gentler life? Sure. Or is that a fair question? <clears throat> sure, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's all the same thing anyway, yeah. <laughs> no matter what you ask. <laughs> And it's so cool. First of all, thank you for inviting me and thank you for the lovely conversation we had the other day. And I'm so glad to see some people that I'm familiar with either, you know, well, basically through Facebook and through the three principles community. So it's very cool. Um, how to live a gentler life. Um, <clears throat> You know, there, to me, the first thing that occurred to me is that there is no how. <laughs> you know? It's not about doing it all. It's just simply about seeing. And that's what you were pointing to earlier, Diane. There is nothing. I see that there's absolutely nothing I can do to live a more gentle life. I, it's got nothing to do with what I do or what I don't do. It is simply in what I see. And in the seeing, life becomes gentler. <laughs> you know, that's just the truth of it. So for me, um, you know, the other day when you were talking about that, that, that post that I had written about needing to love ourselves first. <clears throat> and what I was trying to point to with that was that I'd had an experience of the unconditional and impersonal, the truth of life. I kind of, I call it my Eckhart Tolle moment where I just hung out <laughs> in this impersonal and unconditional love for three days. And when I had that experience, I realized, oh, that's the truth of life. That is what people are pointing to when they're talking about God. That's what all the spiritual traditions are pointing to. And once I had that experience, I could just see it everywhere. 
you know, everyone who's talking, you know, all the wise throughout time, all of these sayings finally made sense to me, you know, look within or you know, the variety of things that they would say. And so, but even, even that is not the, the most important thing. The most important thing is that I just knew it was truth. I had the realization for myself, oh, this is the truth of life. This is what everyone is pointing to. This is the only thing we need to know. And <clears throat> what I was trying to explain when it came to love was that there, there was a difference for me in my experience of what I realized as love. I realized when I had that time that those three days of the unconditional and the impersonal that I had never experienced true love before because now I knew what true love was. I realized that all my past experiences of love were personal. I had skin in the game. I, I would feel loss if I, if I lost the relationship or if the person died. I had all sorts of conditions around them. I didn't love anybody unconditionally. You know, I, I was worried that if, it, not worried, but I would be upset if they didn't love me in return, you know? So there was an, there was an attachment. I was attached to those things. And I saw, oh, that's not love. <laughs> you know? I realized sometimes it feels good. Sometimes it doesn't feel good but it's all an attachment. It's the personal me involved in the relationship or the thing. But this experience of the unconditional and impersonal love was not attached or connected to anything. It just was everything. There was no attachment. There was no personal me involved. And it was way greater than any love I'd ever had personally because all my personal loves had conditions on them and I never saw that before. So when it comes to the idea of loving yourself first, I kind of see that as a metaphor of gaining a glimpse of this understanding because when you gain a glimpse of this understanding for yourself in some way, you realize that you love everything, including yourself. <laughs> that you are everything, including yourself. That we're, we're all connected and everything is unconditionally, impersonally perfect mm -hmm. and beautiful and lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and when I get back into my personal, which I live in 99.99999% of the time, <clears throat> I, can't, I can't see it. But I've had this awareness. I know the truth. I know which direction it's in. I know what it felt like. And I had enough of it that it was more than just a glimpse that I could explain away as a, you know, right off to something, <laughs> to something else. It was big enough for me that, and came in a way that goes, oh, it's kind of my North Star now. So I'm a human being and I, you know, even for the first year when I had this experience, I wanted to get back there. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to live in that space? Oh my God, you just get to walk around with no care and complete joy in everything and everyone. But it doesn't work that way, I discovered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's part of the, the how or the how. There is no how. And the more I try to make a way of getting back there, I see that it's kind of getting me further away from it because I'm trying to be something or get to something. I'm trying to be something other than what I already am at my core. And I'm trying to get to somewhere where I already am. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I don't know how to explain it to people <laughs> because it's one of those things that you just get in these glimpses and there's no rhyme or reason to them. 
and I find that the principles are a beautiful, simple way of explaining however we do. <clears throat> it's kind of simple, so it, it keeps the conversation simple. But I see that people get there in all sorts of ways that have got nothing to do with explaining the principles or, or what they are or what they point to. I mean, I've working with people in the homeless shelter, I see individuals all the time have insights that have got nothing to do with pointing to the spiritual nature of life. They just suddenly get it, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. or they tell me stories of people who have had huge changes just because they had an insight. Now, they don't see it as an insight. They just know that they had a change of mind or they had a realization. And quite often those come in the worst of circumstances. You know, horrific things happen to them. And all of a sudden they got a moment of clarity, you know, that changed their life. And that is that space. And we call it love because to me, it just felt like love. And I don't know any other word, but it's not like my personal love at all. I can almost see it like two completely different things. Personal love involves me and this space that we're looking toward, that everything comes from and goes to, that is the nature of everything, that's solid, that never changes, that's always there. That when we somehow get a glimpse of it and live in it or connect to it, it gives us the wisdom of the ages, I guess, mm. you know? Your North Star. My North Star. It's my North Star. Yeah. I had, um, I think I've said the story before, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself. I had a similar um, experience 27 years ago, 28 years ago, but it lasted a f just a few minutes. Yeah. And in that moment, I knew yeah. that my body was not the real thing. What I was seeing was more real than what I was, I had ever experienced in my life. And like you, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm always in the personal. And as we said last time, Janelle, personal is, a fo is all a form of uh, insecurity. Every, yeah, yeah. Per every, every person, when I get caught, it's a form of insecurity. Yeah. And ego bashing me up and telling me, no, come back here, you're safer here, no, come back here, you're safer here. And indeed, I couldn't explain at the time, I just couldn't talk about what I saw, what, I, what, what had happened. There are no words, you can't, it's not really, you can't really explain it. And then I spent 27 years trying to get back and I, I bumped into the tree. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, now, as I said before, before we started recording, um, I'm very grateful for the principles and I'm very grateful that we, we can look, we can understand how life works, that I am creating everything from moment to moment. And one mo at one point, something looks like this. And then the next minute, something can look like this, depending on my, if I'm in a low mood or not, depending on whatever. But I find that if I, if I ask myself the question, even when um, I'm having one of those moments, because... A lot, in, a lot of people in the community, including myself, say, do nothing. <laughs> but that's, a, that's still the same thing as doing. It's a, yes, exactly. <laughs> do is the problem. <laughs> do nothing. So someone suggested a question to me yesterday. Who am I? Yeah. Who am I? And if I play, play with that, curiously, just if I remember, because yeah. we're not always going to remember, I certainly don't. But something hit me yesterday, this question, who am I? Who are we really? Am I separate from the chair I'm sitting on? 
Am I separate from anything that's, you know, who am I? And um, it, it makes so much sense for want of, I don't know if that makes sense. But it, it, to me, it seems like, okay, conceding uh, that and, and, and pointing people, pointing to, to how we work, how our brain, how our minds work, how we filter everything, how we see everything is fine. But really just looking someone in the eye and say, I, I really had a huge adversity towards this. I had it. I thought to myself, would you, get, I used to tell him, would you get on your bike and leave me alone with this? I mean, I'm, I'm in pain here. Why are you telling me? But now that I've seen it, it seems like the most natural and most, log most logical thing to do. But what I find is the ego screams louder and louder and louder and louder. Yeah, you know, it's um, getting some sort of glimpse is, is the most important thing. And I don't know how we get there. <laughs> it just happens, <laughs> you know, in an infinite number of ways. But it's once you know that, then you can see the difference between that <clears throat> and everything else in life. And you realize, you realize that there's something else to listen to. There's something else to hear. And now you can hear it. <clears throat> you know, it's kind of like when there's a, when you're listening to an orchestra mm -hmm. and, um, people who are really good at music are very sophisticated with their ears and they can hear each individual instrument, you know, playing, they can, they can pull it out of the chaos of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. And this is like that. Mm -hmm. You begin to get the ears to hear and to see. So for me, it's like, I, I look at, you know, a particular saying, and I saw it one way, but now because I've got the ears, I can hear something else underneath it. Oh, that's pointing to this, you know, because I've had that experience or you get that, you just get the ears and eyes to see something that you didn't see before and you can parse it out of all the chaos that's going on in the world. You can pull out the pieces. You know, you can see wisdom everywhere and you can see the difference between dogma, <laughs> mm. but you can see the kind of the, uh, I think George Pransky talks about the grain of truth. There's a grain of truth in everything and you can pull the grain of truth out. You know, you can see the thread, you can pull out that one little instrument, <laughs> you know, that, that's trumpeting the truth, you know. You something just occurred to me. Right? Last time we talked about this, and um, I really like this. Before I skip, I really like this. You, you, you. To me, it sounds like you're saying, once you've seen something, you can't unsee it. Yeah. And the more you see it, the more you recognize it. The more it's, it's like it, it does. And and in this place of seeing. Well, today I was listening to a piece of music and I like classical music. Mm. And I was, when I was going to remind the group that we were going to have this conversation, what came to me was this, this place we're pointing to is where the most beautiful classical pieces were written. Mm. Absolutely. Something like, I don't know, the, the, this, the arms, um, my, one of my favorite pieces of music is uh, um, Armed for Peace. I love it. I just love it. And it's, it, I had to stop the car and listen. And I say to myself, where is this coming from? It must be coming from there. It must be coming from this place. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what came to me. Well, one of the interesting things that I'm discovering is you know, initially what, what my husband noticed because he's a fun, he just loves music, is that he, he just fell in love with music in a new way in that songs he listened to for years by the Beatles or by whoever, all of a sudden he started seeing things in the words 
you know, he used to like them before, but now he sees the wisdom that was just pouring out of them, often probably unknowingly, you know, because it just comes through in the moment of their creativity. They access that. But the other part I'm seeing more and more now, and it was kind of part of my initial insight, is there is wisdom and beauty in everything. So that even what appears to be the most horrific, awful, <laughs> insecure thing is just as beautiful, is just as transcendent, is just as wise, is just as whatever, <laughs> you know. It's all part of this and I, I don't understand it. You know, I don't, I don't know why we have these terrible things that happen to people or the terrible things that people do. But I know at some level, it is just as beautiful and just as incredible as something that is amazing. Mm. And that's part of the unconditional and impersonal. When you get connection to that, you begin to see, oh, no right, no wrong. <laughs> no good, no bad. Just this energy of life coming into form, creating something which provides an experience for me, for you, for whatever we are. <laughs> whatever the hell we are <laughs> you know that's what i was going to refer to before i before i went on a tangent about music this horrific thing and you you, you were referred to it yourself yeah. perfect perfect that's what i wanted to, to to highlight yeah and i can't explain it and it's not something that i talk about with a lot of people unless i sense that they're going there and i probably could go there but i don't for insecure reasons myself <laughs> You know, I don't want to scare people. Yeah. <laughs> but there is beauty in the horror. And I know it sounds completely ridiculous and doesn't make any sense. But I know it's true. Yeah, me too. And there are things I've said in private conversations, which I will not repeat here. Because it, it is mind boggling. But I really do believe that the way I'm seeing it, the horrific things that are happening and that consciousness is allowing to happen mm -hmm. is in my eyes, it's like, I mean, the story of Adam and Eve is a metaphor, right? They took yeah. from the, the fruit and they stopped seeing. They stopped yeah. seeing the true nature of who they are. Now, it seems to me like horrific things are happening because we're being pointed back. We're being asked to say, this is who you are. Wake up wake up you know we're being pushed back to adam and eve's tree metaphorically speaking so that we know okay right this is who i am i, I don't have to pretend anything else because i am consciousness i am love well you know my my husband talked uh, had an insight about um original sin and um he realized oh that was probably when we first got thought like that's the metaphor of the story that they, they were, um, you know, infected with thought <laughs> before they were just living as part of nature. And then they got thought <laughs> and that's the original sin. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. It makes so much sense. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then the Bible, the Bible stories make so much more sense because you can see everything in light of this new perspective. So, shall we open this conversation to anyone who wants to ask questions? So, as usual, um, I, I ask you to wave or to, to literally physically wave <laughs> or, or to go down to uh, the bottom, manage participants. And if you click on manage participants, you can... Um, hang on a minute. Where's the raise hand thing? Hey. I can't see it. Usually there's raise your hand next to it. It's vanished. Anyway, um, I can't see it. I see it on mine, so... Um, yeah? 
but I'm on an I'm on an app on my iPad. Oh, strange! I can't see it on my. Anyway, um, it's all right. Is there anyone who wants to ask Janelle something, question, or or make a comment, or whatever it is? We've got some stuff in the chat. Yeah, that's a lovely. Hi, my lovelies. Never heard this lady before, but <laughs> love her already. Just seeing her face. Thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> oh. So. Oh, Joel. Yay, Joel. Go oh, on. Can you unmute yourself? I can. Hi. Hi, everybody again. Hi, Janelle. It, I, it's not so much a question. I just, I wanted to, I was struck by your listening to music um, analogy because mm. um, very, very recently while listening to music, for some reason, I, I think I had seen some instructional video on how drummers play the drums or something. Mm -hmm. And for the first time I started listening to music, like familiar songs that I'd loved and heard and then other pieces of music. And I realized that I'd never paid attention to any of the individual instruments before. But now with a, the tiniest bit of, um, I hate to say intentionality, but some kind of having ears for the drums, I was starting to hear the drum part amidst the um, pleasant cacophony of the songs that I like. Yeah. And I suddenly got so much dimensionality out of the whole piece of music and how everything fit together around the timekeeper of the, of the drummer's function. And it occurred to me that I could have a whole new appreciation for music now by listening into music rather than just listening to music. Mm -hmm. And so my experience of music has been broadening and deepening lately because of that. And yet, as you were talking, it occurred to me that something else is also going on that the, the more I'm seeing, and as Diane keeps referring to, looking in this direction of who am I really, you know, I, I'm seeing into normal everyday, otherwise mundane or sometimes confusing, um, whatever the whatever the regular transactions of life are i'm i'm listening into them and hearing like you said the truth that's in there or um gee but for this person's seeming misunderstanding i think they would have a different experience of what seems to be upsetting or or just somehow by by being a part of this transaction with the calm I feel from what I see of this understanding seems to be transforming this um, interaction with this person. It, it's now, what it looks like is, is my life is continually being returned to me as something more pleasurable on a moment to moment basis. In, in, in a way that I've never experienced before. I know there was a, that was a long road to hoe and no, might have been complicated what I said, but, but 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 there's a connection between between the the specific listening into music, and, and the ears we're developing to listen into life, to the truth of life at every moment that needs no goal or endpoint. That alone is like such a an amazing gift and pleasure, just to be alive and and have this awareness. It's it's extraordinary. Yeah. It is extraordinary. I know um, for whatever reason, your story reminded me of something I heard Mara Gleason talk about one time when she was with a, a group of corporate people pointing to the principles. And there was one guy who's quiet throughout all the sessions and then, and uh, he pushed back. Oh, he, was, he wasn't quiet, I'm sorry. He pushed back on everything. And he was super smart and super intellectual and he read tons of philosophy and tons of all sorts of books. And um, he was just fighting, fighting, fighting all the way through. 
And the third day he came in and he was really quiet. And um, they went to him and said, well, what's going on? And he, he replied saying that he had lived life through his intellect and he loved it. It was like a, a life was like a, um, you know, a roller coaster, uh, a, a, a park, you know, a theme park for him. He had all these books and stuff to learn and he just loved knowledge and he loved learning new things. And it, it, it he just lived, he loved it. And, um, what he discovered though was that it was like his whole life he'd been living in this room that was full of thousands of books and all over the walls and so much knowledge and so much to learn and so much interesting stuff and what he didn't realize was that he was just in one room in this huge mansion <laughs> and all he needed to do was open the door mm. he didn't know he was he didn't know that was all this other to see. He had no idea. So it was kind of like this hidden door was opened up in this room. And all of a sudden, oh my God, I thought there was already so much to learn and to see. And now he realized he was just in one room in a mansion, you know, on a, on a planet, <laughs> you know, in a universe <laughs> with infinite possibility to see more. You know, and I, I love that, that that's what this gives us is um, we just get to see so much more. You know? <laughs> we were living in this tiny little bubble. I was living in a tiny little bubble for my entire life, you know, <laughs> thinking that life was a certain way and that my thinking was real. And then when you begin to... <clears throat> see that all life is an illusion. <laughs> you know? It just opens up this, oh, wow, look at all there is to see there. I didn't see that before. I didn't hear that before. You're, you're not stuck in that little tiny room. You've got a whole universe to play in now. Boy, that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and with that, of course, we not, not only is all of, life illusory but but the i who i imagine i was experiencing all of that is the fundamental illusion yeah yeah and if that and how do you explain that mm. <laughs> like, you just... yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a really great question I, I i i try to i try to connect with a person and assume that they've already made some sort of recognition of that someone in their lives at some point mm -hmm. because i think most people even if they've rejected it out of hand have at least considered it yeah you know um that reminds me of um one person i was speaking to at the homeless shelter he was actually um a guy who was really rich he had gotten into um development uh, real estate development and uh, become a multimillionaire. And um, I believed his story because he talked a lot about uh, the stuff that some of the things I was familiar with. Um, he talked about traveling all the world, all around, all, the, all over the world and all these places he went to and what he'd seen. And I've traveled a lot because I used to work for a travel company. So I was familiar with the places he was talking about. And he talked about scuba diving. And I used to be a diver a long time ago. And so... Um, you know, we had some things to talk about with that. So you would have thought his story was made up and crazy, but this one I could tell was really true. He'd really done all these things and had this, but he got caught in some sort of scam and he lost all his money. And um, he had talked his best clients into investing in it and all of his family to invest in it. So they all lost all sorts of money and they all hated him because of it. And um, he also lost his, um, what he thought was his reason for being like, how's he going to be able to get girls now if he doesn't have a fancy car and money to take them out in a date and you know, all that kind of stuff. So he's really caught up in all that. But one of the things that was interesting when we were having our talk was he said, um, I don't know how, sometimes I don't know why we get there or how, but, uh, and, and I have this happen with a few of them where they will talk about a mystical experience 
And um, when he was younger, he, um, uh, probably in his 20s, I think, he was sitting on a park or sitting on a bench outside of a store in his hometown. And um, he, for a minute um, or two or a few minutes, he had this transcendent experience where he felt um, here in the minds of everyone around him. So there was a, a man walking with his son holding hands and he could hear the love that the father had for his son. He was watching some people in a park across the way sitting on a park bench and he could hear their conversation, even though they were far away. He knew what they were talking about. And he saw someone else and he could hear inside their mind what they were thinking. <laughs> and he thought that he had had this experience because he used to do drugs before. <laughs> and he thought it was just a, a, you know, a leftover from taking the drugs. But when we had this discussion, he realized, oh, it wasn't the drugs. That's the kind of thing that happens when you drop into this space and you get connected to it. And people have this stuff all the time, but they write it off to something else. You know, mm -hmm. like, Dan, you were talking about how you had that one experience and you knew the truth. Mm -hmm. you know? But then you go on with life. <laughs> you know? And same for him. And I think same for everybody. I think everybody has all sorts of these mystical experiences that we write off to something else. You know, I've had, um, I was in a car accident once where time slowed down um, and I just wrote it off and I told it to people, but I never made anything out of it. Now I see it completely differently. You know, oh, when you lose all your thinking, time slows down because <laughs> that's the experience I had in those three days was time to slow down. Um, my uh, husband talks about playing sports and being able to slow the ball down. And now I see, oh, it's not about slowing the ball down. It's about slowing, your mind is slower. And so you have time to react. There's nothing getting in the way of just seeing everything as if it's happening in slow motion. Or I had an experience when I was in hospital when I was a teenager and, um, I woke up from the bed and I was, my sister was sitting at the bottom of the bed, but I was floating up above the bed, looking down at myself and my sister on the bed. And I just thought that was a dream. But now I go, hmm, maybe not so much. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I don't know for sure, but I just know that, and I can't know for sure. And also it is all illusory because it's in form. And it doesn't make any difference what I choose to believe about it or not. But it's just all these little pointers that point me back to this understanding, that point to the miracle of the formless, mm -hmm. that there's something other than this form that we think is true and real, you know? You know, you're talking about we've all probably had these little moments and we write it down to nothing. It happened very a few minutes ago. Now, it might be something really small, but to me, it's typical. When I went on a tangent about the music and creating, I wanted to talk about that, that um, what you touched upon yourself, that every, even in, if something is horrific, Something is born from that. Now you did. You had no idea that I was going to say that. <laughs> no idea. So to me, that's a small but definitive indication that there is something behind because we don't read minds. So what? What was that? You know. I mean. <laughs> I know, and it's 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 funny for me because I feel like I'm the least intuitive person on the planet. I swear to God. <laughs> You know, I have, I have some clients who are so in tune with things and so like, they just notice the coincidences and they notice, they just, you know, they'll, I have lots of clients who have premonitions about things that they're thinking about someone just when they turn the corner and they can see the person in their car, you know, like it's just mind boggling the things that people will tell me. And it just never, I feel like it never happens to me. I feel like, you know, <laughs> Yeah. 
I never get that stuff, but I know it's happening all the time. Yes. You know, I just, I just don't see it. <laughs> and Garrett talks about, and now I'm, 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 th that happens also in the space between thought. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and we all have this space between thought, for sure. Mm -hmm. We just don't notice it. We don't think it's there because sometimes the thinking is so loud. But even in that moment, in that space, and I think you referred to it, in that space between thought, I know who I truly am. You said that to me last time in the last conversation we had. Yeah. It, for me, <laughs> you know, I am just this human being living this ridiculous life <clears throat> in all my human ridiculousness. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I know that underneath I am not who I think I am, you know? So I get insecure, I get depressed, I get upset, I, I, I get egotistical, I get whatever, I get insecure, I get all these things. And, but I, but there's something something else the space between thoughts there's something that doesn't forget it's the glimpse that doesn't go away that always knows underneath no matter the ridiculousness of whatever i come up with in my mind that makes me joyful or makes me suffer you know mm -hmm. i know the truth of this thing i know the truth of this space between thoughts i know you, it's just something you know, and you can't explain it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't explain it. Someone has to feel it. They have to experience it. And, I, you know, go ahead. No, I, I, one ex, I'm going back to the horrific and about understanding that even, well, I've never had anything horrific in my life happening. It seemed that it was horrific, but it, it wasn't. I mean, the most um, the thing that ha the biggest thing that happened to me was that i found myself on the streets mm. and but even then i knew i just knew i i don't know why i had this knowing i knew that it's okay and i cried for six months <laughs> <laughs> I locked myself in a dark room for, for six months. I didn't want to see anyone. I, I hardly went out. I was looking for a job. But even then, I knew. I just knew. So, And we all have this knowing. I well, think... The, mm -hmm. You know what's, what kind of stands out to me is even if you don't know, you're still okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing, too, is the... Even if someone never wakes up to this, even if they never get a glimpse, even if they, they never see any of this, they are of the formless. And when they die, they will go back to the formless. <laughs> and they are already of it all anyway. Mm. You know, there's... Because um, sometimes I think when I say to people, you know, you just need to get a glimpse, <clears throat> then it becomes something that they want to do. Yes. You know, I need to get this, you know. <laughs> and in fact, Vanessa Vaime said, yes, once you have an insight, you can't look back. I'm just waiting for that insight. Yeah. And this is what you're referring to now. And, and it, it just doesn't work that way. It's, it's because it, 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 you either see it or you don't. And if you don't see it, it's, it's okay. But the thing yeah. is, it, it gives more hope for someone perhaps who is suffering mm. and uh, suffering to an extent that that is absolutely not nice they would want to have this insight so that they can live a gentler life so there's that want and desire but another thing that occurs to me right now if that person is wanting it and is in the community somehow they've already seen it 
Yeah. Somehow I, they know already for themselves that it's the truth. Sorry, carry on, John. Yeah, no, uh, I love that, that there's something that's bringing them here, whatever that is. Yeah. And they may come for a bit and they may go, but whatever it is that has them seeking for whatever reason is the sense that there is like, you wouldn't be seeking if you didn't think there was something else. Right. So they may not get what they want <clears throat> or what they think that they want from the three principles understanding, but everything that they want is everywhere in every moment. And they will see it or they will not. <laughs> you know? And that is part of, for me, the beauty of this understanding. You know, I work with a lot of people at the shelter who I don't think get insights, you know, or haven't had insights. And their lives seem, for me, in form, pretty tough and horrific, like horrific stories. And I just rest in the knowing that they're perfectly okay. They just don't see it. And even if they don't see it, they're still perfectly okay. And I also have this sense, <clears throat> this knowing that if they don't understand it or see it now, they'll know about it when they die. Because I had kind of, um, that was part of my three day experience. In a way it was like dying. You know, I lost the personal me mm. and saw the truth of life. And I just never get worried about even people dying anymore because I think, well, that's relief from their life of suffering, you know. We have this, um, you know, I've told you before, my husband <clears throat> has had some really interesting insights. And one of them is, is that we're the nerve endings for universal consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. And so that we are just here on this planet to, if there is a reason, which I don't think there is a real reason, it just is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if there is any reason, it is just to have experience. And the most horrific is just as valuable as the most joyful. And because of each individual human being getting to be here, having you know, billions of different people having billions of different experiences in an infinite number of different ways. That's just all rich, richly informing universal consciousness. And maybe some people talk about that that's how universal consciousness grows or learns. I don't know. I don't even think it's that. It's beyond time, space, and matter, which I can't understand. And I live in the form and I try to make sense out of it in form, <laughs> but it's, it's not that, it's nothing in form. It's something other and you can't talk about it. You can make up all sorts of stuff about it if you want, but it'll never be anything other than a, just a sense of knowing if you get a sense of knowing. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just um, taking it all in. Sometimes there's no, there's also no need to say. There's no need to say anything. Since I'm asking myself this question, who am I? Mm -hmm. I'm, it's, it's giving me some sort of solace. It, it breaks me out, of, it takes me out of the personal. Who am I? Just asking this question, who am I? So, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, I'm, wa I'm wondering if anybody has any questions, comments. I think we just had one here in the chat. 
Oh yeah, this is what calls me home. I know we are formless beings. Vanessa, would you like to read it? Would you like to yourself or sh Okay, I'll, I'll read it. Yeah. This is what calls me home, as I know we are formless beings, pure consciousness, and I know nothing is right or wrong truly, as consciousness allows it all, but the formless calls me home. I know being human is not my true self. Makes sense to me. Mm. <laughs> You know, for me, I, um, I've seen since this understanding spiritual teachers who point to, um, you know, just answer the question about who am I? And I don't know if I get the same thing that you get from it where you say it kind of gives you a, a kind of solace in some ways for me it's more about um in a funny way who i am not <laughs> <You know? laughs> i am not the ridiculousness that i live in i am not the <laughs> the chaos of life and yet i am at the same time mm. you know i um because I can't see who I am. I, I can't know who I am because who and what I am that I've had a glimpse of is the formless. <laughs> and I can't, I can only intuit it in some way, you know, I can only, um, <sighs> I think I've just started playing with this question, who am I? And who am I not also makes sense. Yeah. I find it helps me to identify less with the personal yeah. and think more of the impersonal and the unconditional love. So yeah. maybe we're saying the same things, you're adding yeah. a lot and I'm, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think there's there's an infinite number of ways of getting there. And you're yeah. absolutely right. If I say who I am not, then I'm focusing on form. I'm pointing to the billion things that I've made up about myself. And do I want a busy mind thinking about that? I don't know. For me, I just kind of tend to go there because for me, it's funny. <laughs> like, yeah. I just see the humor in it. Yeah. And I I also, because I've had a, I had a glimpse of who I am, yeah. whatever that is. Um, I've always, I'm in the game of life. And um, even though I am something other, you know, I'm here to play the game. Yeah. And, and ultimately, yeah, it's something Vanessa saying as well. Life is a game and not a pleasant one for millions of us. I yes. want to live as my true self. I think it's easier to see who I am not than who I am. Mm. The thing is this, the idea of knowing who I am not or, 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 or playing with these questions mm -hmm. is not to eradicate in any way, our, I mean, or, or thinking about any uh, eradicate. It's, it's not does not imply but we're going to stop living life. Life oh is, my. so for all intents and purposes, it's a roller coaster ride. Go with it, go with the flow. Go with it, go with the flow. When, yeah. when, we, when we're in, not in resistance, this is, it's, I'm, it's a manifestation of consciousness. It's a manifestation, it's just me getting on, it's me living, but knowing the principles, Knowing this, this truth that we've seen clearly, knowing this does not stop me from, from experiencing everything completely and allowing myself to feel the joy, the sadness, sometimes the horror, the laughter, the tra the, the, sometimes tragedy, the, whatever. I think 
it does not does does not equal this knowing does not equal okay let's just live in a bubble no because if we want to live in a bubble we either kill ourselves for want i mean just 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 stop living somehow and move on i mean I, I, kill ourselves or, or or die just just die i, I don't think that's the, the intention i think it's just live go for, go on this you have you're on a journey with the snowing but not using it to stop feeling i think there's there is so much learning in the feeling well we have um i think most many people who come across any type of spiritual understanding that helps them they initially think that what it's the point of it is to feel bad less and to um not suffer and over time what you begin to realize is that it's it's got nothing really to do with feeling bad less as much as being okay with no matter what you feel because you are not your feelings you are simply the receptacle through which the feelings are appearing mm. and you don't take them personally you you and you do get caught up in them because that's human nature i mean feelings are meant to come through our body to create an experience so i get caught in it all the time like i said 99.9999 percent of the time <laughs> i think i'm janelle having an experience you know yeah but you begin to get a distance from it it's like you can watch it you can watch your life happening as if it is um, a play rather than you being personally in it like you're watching your movie up on a screen you're watching yourself up on the screen so you cry you get upset you laugh um, but you see it as something external to yourself in some way and you get this distance from it you know so that you can like when you begin to see that your bad feeling has got nothing to do with you in any way shape or form <laughs> it is just a temporary feeling coming through you you get freedom from it so in a way there is less of feeling bad, but it's not because um, you just don't have it anymore. You still have it, but you have an entirely different relationship to it. And that's where the freedom is, you know, that's where the, mm. you get to see the beauty in everything you know you get to have i remember um my mother died a, a little over a year ago and um i remembered having and i've had lots of people die in my family before so i'm kind of used to i know what the process is going to be you know <laughs> and i know that it gets better over time and um so i already had some distance from it even though i had the experience um it it came with uh, some understanding, but it also came with the understanding of this truth of life. And a couple of things were very um, peaceful for me in that experience, in that when she died, I realized she wasn't suffering anymore, mm -hmm. you know? And just for me personally, in the world of form, my mom has gone to the formless and she's not suffering anymore. And that was just a, a nice personal thing for me. Now, what else happened was I remember having these waves of um, really strong grief. And I don't cry, don't tend to cry a lot, <laughs> although I cry more now with the principles. I'm not so, I think I used to not cry before because I, I was afraid to show my feelings, you know. So um, I just let myself have these these almost convulsions or waves of extreme grief and huge tears and oh i was just so lost in it and one of the times i woke up for a minute minute and 
I realized, wow, that is so cool that I can have this horrific feeling of profound grief. And I, I just, I was amazed at my human system to be able to give me a feeling that was that strong, you know, that basically kind of consumed my whole body. I could feel it everywhere mm. in all sorts of ways. And there was no control to it at all. It just came through in these waves and convulsions. And I thought, oh, that is so cool, <laughs> you know? look at what my body has the ability to do and that's what i see now and i don't get that all the time i mean i still deal with all sorts of uh, feelings of depression and i feel insecure and i'm i'm a terrible person i'm not good enough i should be doing more oh my god i make up so much stuff about myself that I get caught up in that still feels very real to me. And I don't have a lot of distance from it most of the time, you know, but I keep waking up, you know, and I always remember, even in the worst of it, there's always this little, Oh yeah. You know where your North star is. You yeah. Know? know the truth. You know, it'll go away. If that's what I have to tell myself to make myself feel better. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. You get this distance and just having any sense of this distance in any shape or form is already miles ahead of most of the human beings on this planet who have no clue. You know? And, and even if they have no clue, that's okay too. Mm. You know, that's the richness, the journey that they get to bring, you know, um, <clears throat> There's a, a book I read a little while ago, um, this woman named Natalie Sedman, who'd had a near-death experience. And um, she talked about how you can, how basically we're, we ju jump into a body, you know, and we come to this planet and we play the game of life. And she talked about how on the other side, they see us all like warriors, you know, like we get to come here like, it's almost like, oh, that's so cool. You got to go down there and do that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And I don't know how true that is. You know, I think it's, again, it's all form. Who knows? But I get the sense of that, you know, just like we are the nerve endings for universal consciousness that my husband had. I see her explanation, the same thing that, and my husband had another one where he said, um, uh, the world is like a Disneyland for, um, <laughs> Uh, for for souls you know so a soul gets to jump into a body and go down to Disneyland you know <laughs> then they eventually have to come back and be just their soul again you know so you get to experience all the joys all the horrors mm. and um, then you get to come back and everybody who is not getting to come are is really envious oh you got to go to Disneyland <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and so, so. Like, were you really scared? You know? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get to be Tom and sometimes you get to be Jerry, although that's not Disneyland, you know, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> one is Jerry. Exactly. Sometimes we get to be Tom, sometimes Jerry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Vanessa has just written something. Can I read this, Vanessa? Uh, if you put the... For, well, everybody's there for everybody to read, but can I read it aloud? But I need to see your face. Of course, then. Okay. I feel I've had to be suicidal to get these glimpses, to be pushed to the edge. Life is pushing me to transform into my true self, but I'm clinging on for dear life. Bloody stupid of me. Um, sh would you like to comment on that? Or sh or? Yeah, no? sure. Um, you know, everything is whatever we think it is. And that's the crazy thing about all of this is that um, we're constantly making up stories about um, what we think is true and what we think we are and what we think we, we habitually do to cause a certain thing to happen. I guess 
one of the one of the interesting things, and I've seen this before, even before I came across the principles, was um, we try to make sense out of the world, so we look for patterns, mm -hmm. and then once we see a pattern, then we decide that the pattern is truth, and then all we can see is the pattern, and we can't see anything. Any we all we see is what confirms the pattern, and we completely ignore or dismiss anything that is contradictory to the pattern. <laughs> and I think that happens for all of us all the time. You know, we we have these feelings or these experiences <clears throat> and we look for connections. We look to make it sense. You know, there's all sorts of people who are really good in sports who have all sorts of rituals. You know, I heard someone the other day, they did really good on the trade floor, um, you know, making money. Uh, and on that particular day, they came in the side door. So then every day after that, they were coming in the side door instead of the front door because they thought that would help their trade. You know? <laughs> we make all these connections all the time, but really there is no truth in any of that. And there's no truth in who we think we are. There's no truth in what we think we do because that's constantly changing all the time. And the only truth of life is this formless, this space of the unconditional impersonal from which we all arise and have our experience and from which in a way we all go back to when we're not here anymore. You know, it's the space in between thoughts. It's yeah. What's what's coming up for me is that what you just said, the prover proves what the seeker seeks. Yeah. <laughs> but but also it goes back to me, there is some We don't choose our thoughts. Thoughts pop up. And we think we get to choose the next thought because that also looks real. But in real, what is really, what's, what, what is happening is just that another thought pops up. So if, And, and it goes back to the story of Adam and Eve and consciousness allowing stuff to happen, allowing things to arise in our consciousness, simply perhaps to point us back to the truth. But I know I'm creating everything, but if I'm not choosing my thinking, then it's just life is just manifesting through me. Consciousness is, a, as you said, it's, it's playing out on the screen and I'm looking at it and sometimes I take distance from it and I can just look and, and not identify with it. And sometimes more often than not, I'm identified with the story and I get lost and it becomes personal and I try to solve it. But what I found in this roller coaster ride, that there's always something new for me to see. Even when I was recently some things happened to me which I really didn't like. Mm -hmm. I, really, I didn't like them at all. But through it, I saw something new. No. <laughs> so, and, and it sounds crazy, but, and I don't like to, for want of a better word, I feel I've had to be suicidal. I don't think you had to be suicidal, Vanessa. This is what I'm, which drew my attention. I think it's, it's panned out. Who, who, who chooses to be suicidal? We don't choose that, right? And I mean, yeah, I have this train of thought. It's, but why do the same thoughts go on repetitively? Um, there's a scientific answer to that question. 
And there is um, also another, Jonah, would you like to answer that? And then I'll perhaps I'll give, cause I mean. Yeah, I don't think they go on repetitively. And that's just only from my own experience. Um, and it's not um, that I don't have the same thoughts over and over again, but I begin to see that it's not so much that I have the same thoughts, it's, um, it's what I do with them. So one of the struggles that I had all my life that led to my depression was um, I felt like I was a professional procrastinator. You know, <laughs> I, never, um, I never did all the things that I should be doing. And I had a huge list and the list just continued to grow my entire life. I should be exercising more. I should be brushing my teeth twice a day instead of once a day. I should be, um, you know, reading more. I should be going back to university. I should be, um, uh, you know, climbing higher up the corporate ladder. I should, 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 should. And I had a billion of them, a billion of them. And every time I thought that I should be or should be doing or should be something other than what I was, it was added onto my list. But then what happened was um, once I got this insight, I realized, oh my God, I'm perfectly fine despite all this stuff going on. It doesn't matter whether I do or do not do anything. It's got nothing to do with who and, who and what I am at the core of my being. And so I still get should thoughts all the time, all the time, <laughs> all the time. I should get off Facebook. I should be a better three principles practitioner. I should take that course. I should, you know, oh my God, it goes on forever and ever. I should fix that thing in the house. I should do this. And I still have all the time these things on my list. And I can feel the pain of them. Even as I say them now, I can, <laughs> I can sense the feeling of it. You know, it is not nice. <laughs> but I've somehow learned to not pay as much attention to them anymore. Mm. Because I have that North Star, you know, that they still come up they don't have the holding power that they used to before. Like when they, when I used to have them on my list, I'd see them and I could, oh, the pain was intense that, that I could feel. This should, not, not in, I'm not enough, I'm broken in some way. What the hell's the matter with me? Why can't I do these things? Anybody can do these things, what's the matter with me? And it came with a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, once I got this understanding I still get the same thoughts, but they just don't mean anything as much to me anymore. And sometimes I get caught in them, for sure. And sometimes I'll have three days of feeling constantly sorry for myself and what's the matter with me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know. But then I wake up again and I remember, oh, it doesn't matter. One of the insights that I had was, um, in those three days was it doesn't matter what I do or don't do. I'm always going to be perfectly fine, even if I die. And I kind of remember that a lot. doesn't matter what I do or don't do. I'm going to be perfectly fine. And so the thoughts still come up all the time, but they just, um, and I don't know why they do. And some of them have actually gone away. And some of them, they went away for a while and they came back again. <laughs> but, they just don't have the holding power. Joel, yes. you were going to say something? Yeah. Um, like a, a dog who only hears certain sounds. When I heard you call my name, I rushed back to the screen. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, a recent very um, um, For lack of a better word, beneficial aha I had was just in the area you were talking about, Janelle. 
yeah, the same types of thoughts come back all the time. And, and up until very recently, I, I thought to myself and I, and I shared with other people, well, I could choose what to do with them now. I can choose whether to pay attention to them now or not. And, and now I'm seeing that whether I pay attention to them or don't pay attention to them will just be an implication of understanding something deeper that, that the, the idea to do, to do whatever I do with them when they come in and Diane, you pointed to it earlier too, is just a thought coming from the same place that the thought that I would do something with is coming from. <laughs> but, 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 but somehow knowing that I'm on the continual thought IV drip <laughs> and that I'm okay no matter what it is, is, I'm, I'm sure there's more to see, but that, so far that's like the keys of the kingdom i mean that's that's it i i will see what i see and think what i think as a download or as and i love your husband's analogy we're the nerve endings of, of consciousness mm -hmm. and and i i don't have to worry about any of it because it's not up to me mm -hmm. and i and it always and will continue to be okay even if even if i died like you said yeah. Yeah. love that it's like consciousness is doing the, 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 all the heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's, one, it's one more imagined layer of burden coming off our shoulders. There, and that's the other thing, too, that's beautiful about this understanding. Thanks for that, Joel. They, that we, it takes everything off that we have to do. And when they talk about the not doing, <laughs> that is part of the realization that comes with this. There is nothing to do. And it's not that you don't do things, but there is nothing you have to do. There is nothing you should do. There is nothing you need to do. You are simply this universal energy having an experience of life. Yeah. And there's nothing else going on except that, you know? And we can make up all sorts of stories, and I do. I do. I'm a professional. <laughs> but that's not who we are at the core of our being. And you get some sort of understanding in that in any way it gives you the freedom to not have to do anything with whatever thinking you're having, whatever thinking feeling you're having. I think that that's why I'm asking myself this question. Mm. Who am I? even when, when, the, when the personal thinking arises, because like you, I get caught 99.99% .99 of the time. Yeah. And I've realized that the more I'm looking in this direction, the more resistance I am facing, and, and more and more and more. So who am I or who am I not? Both are good, they're both pointing in the same direction. And when I ask, when I've just started playing with this, when I'm asking myself this question, who am I? Um, and recently, just two nights, three nights ago, since um, we have an ingrained ability to um, intellectualize and try to solve everything from the personal mind. <laughs> yeah. So, and sometimes people ask me questions in my group, and I look at the question. I know the answer, man, but I don't know how to say it because I get caught, you know? And I went to sleep and I thought, I'm not going to answer because it will really be from my intellect, and I don't want to answer from my intellect. And I woke up in the middle of the night. And suddenly, it just came to me. I answered. It was four o'clock in the morning. 
And as I relaxed into it, then I knew who I was for a few seconds. I felt that we are one beating consciousness. Yeah. And that's it. Exactly. But the intellect, we, I mean, let's, let me talk about myself. It is very busy trying to solve us. And I've been around psychologists since I was 23 and analysis. And since someone told me, you're really good at analyzing. You're this, you're really good. Oh God. It was like she gave me the crown and, yeah. uh, and, and she said, Go ahead, keep doing it. And I've been doing it ever since. It's only now that I'm just realizing, no, that's not where the answer is. You know? <laughs> I'm finding this question, at least for me, before I was really, I, I was really rebellious. Stop telling me to look in that direction again, because I'm going to hit you, you know, type of thing. So that's how, how resistant, I was, resistant I was to it. Now it's, it's, this was even lovelier than I'd expected. Have to get ready for my gift. Okay. Okay, bye, Joel. Thanks. <laughs> See you. Um, but when I get the glimpses, anyway, I've, I've, I've lost my train of thought. That's it. I have nothing else to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just keep going to that point, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it is so ridiculously simple. But we live in a world of form that is infinitely complex. And um, the answer is in that. And, it, you know, Garrett uh, Kramer has been unrelenting in pointing to that since he's had his own insights. Yeah. And I see the value in that. But I also see that I have no idea when or how people get their insights, you know, and I've got that one story of um, that person at the homeless shelter who had those two people who in the worst of her behaviors had their biggest insights and 30 years later came back and wanted to thank her. You know? <laughs> and so I don't know when or where or how people get to see something in their true nature, something about themselves other than the personal and discover something. I don't know. I really, truly don't know. <laughs> and the thing is, it's, it's not on us. It's not up to us. No. When someone sees something or, or, or yeah. looks at it and sees it, it's just, it's just that um, you just go. I mean, uh, what's his name? George Bransky had no idea that I was going to see something which just one sentence that he said. Yeah, I know. He certainly didn't have in his mind, oh, Diane Shuira will watch this in April 2017. I'll say this so that she can see it. We, yeah. we never know. Part I of know. the reason, I mean, if, why am I doing these, these Zoom calls? Why am I having these conversations? Oh, that, is, that is funny because we are not in control. You know, and that's, that's the paradox of this. But I guess for me, it's just fun to show up. And in the form, I would rather do this than do anything else. You know what I mean? So that's, that's my excuse. Yeah. But even while I'm doing it in form, I know that I've got no control. I, am, I don't have any influence. I, I am not controlling this. Like it's way, way bigger than I can even begin to comprehend. You yeah. know? <laughs> so the more I kind of begin to see that I'm here to play and love and try to get out of my head and into my heart mm. however that happens mm. then life just goes on and some people will see insights because i happen to be there around the same time <laughs> but mm. i don't know if they would have had an insight anyway i don't know like i just don't know i can't there doesn't seem to be any pattern that I've seen other than not trying to be caught up in my own thinking and even trying is not the right word because I just don't know how this works. I really, I'm clueless. I have no idea. I, I think this would be a great way to end this conversation actually because, <laughs> because oh, you want to ask something. Uh, because we really don't, I mean, just because I happen to facilitate or we are facil or we're just together, I mean, I can't get into your mind, plant a thought and make you see. 
No, it's only, it only works one way from the inside out and that's it. Yeah. But and, before, the mm -hmm. and the inside is the infinite formless. So try to find it. You yeah. can't. You know? In fact, Garrett says point at it. Point at yeah. it. You can't point. <laughs> Thank you. Chris, I'll take, shall we, this is, will be the last, because it's nearly half past eight, so we're, for me here. Is there something you want to add or ask? I just wanted to add that this, I haven't been able to be here all the time, but I just wanted to say what you just said about playfulness or mm -hmm. playing. That's for me the, the, that's how, that was an insight I had, that it's, it's playfulness. So you don't have to take it seriously. That's the difference. Taking it seriously is not playing. So that's it. Thank you for, for your wonderful words. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us today, Chris. <coughs> and thanks okay. for joining us, Vanessa, as well. Yeah. It was a pleasure to meet you and see your questions and hear your comments. You're already seeing so much already just from the beautiful things that you've written. Mm. some amazing things that you already see about the truths of life. I believe you've had insights you just don't realize you have. 